Hi, this is Pastor Brad at Aldersgate United Methodist Church, and it's so good to have you with me today. In a little bit, I'll be sharing a message about the joy of God in our lives. But before we do this, I do have a few announcements. First of all, I want you to know that we have a committee getting together preparing for an in-house worship at Aldersgate United Methodist Church in Rockford. And so I'll communicate to you the information they have and let you know when the first service will be. We're really excited, and I'm excited to meet you personally. Also, we want to thank you for your giving. It's really appreciated. And so may God bless you as you continue to give to the ministry here at Aldersgate United Methodist Church. Also, we have some names that I would like to share with you for prayer concerns. Barb Hui, Covella Weller, Ron Nee Day, Jim Gridley, Chloe Stoner, Ruben Alvarez, Sandy Bakey, Hank Holler, Maria Kamens, Sandy Winnick, George Franklin, Carla Barros, David Levine, Renee Borgman, Mark Hui, Shirley Gorenson, Don O'Hay, Esther Crandall, and Beth Whitford. And of course, uh, Esther, a happy birthday to you. You had a birthday a few days ago, and may God's blessings be with you <clears throat> as you um, celebrate your time that God has given to you. Let's have a word of prayer for all of these people and for us and for our gracious God. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we come to you this day. And these are trying times and we ask for your guidance. Help us to be people of faith, people who care for one another and lift each other up in prayers. Though we are not gathered together in our church building, instill in us the truth that we are still a body of believers who have been sent here to, to share the message of God's love to the world. For those who are sick, we ask for your healing Holy Spirit to be with them this day. For those who have lost loved ones, Lord, give them the comfort they need, the peace. And for those who struggle with anxiety, depression, and other things in their lives, Lord, we ask that you would be with them in a very, very special way, sharing your grace and your love and your joy and your comfort. Now be with us this day as we look at the Bible for the first time once again. We pray this in Christ's name, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Today, I am reading from Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10. So they read from the book, from the law of God, with interpretation. They gave sense so the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra the priest, and the scribe, and the Levites, who taught the people, said to the people, Listen to this. This is fascinating. It's wonderful. This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep, for all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the wine, and send portions of them to those whom nothing is prepared, for this day is holy 
to the Lord. And do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. May the blessings of God be upon the reading of his word today. Today I would like to talk with you about those times in life when it feels as though all the joy is gone, feelings of sadness and depression seem to overtake you, and you just want to throw in the towel and cry out, take me home, Jesus. I've had enough of this life down here. All of us have had times like these, and some of us more than others. Some are like the old hee-haw song. Do you remember, remember the song? If I had no bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Now, this is not to say that your feelings are not valid. Of course your feelings are valid. Feelings are a real thing. But I believe with God, when you feel like there is no joy in your life, you can know deep down inside that God is just waiting to surprise you with an abundance of joy, a joy that will knock your socks off. God is going to fill you with joy that is beyond anything you can imagine. I like what the Bible says, Isaiah chapter 43, verse 19. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and a river in the desert. Your life may be like a wilderness, but God is preparing you a life of abundance, a life of joy. It's an oldie, but it's a good one. You may have heard about the Lone Ranger who looked up on the hill to the west and said to Tonto, there's a big war party of Sioux on top of the hill. Tonto said, we will go to the east. The Lone Ranger said, they're a Pawnee approaching from the east. We will go to the south, said Tonto. But there are Apache in the south, and you know they don't like me. We will go to the north, King Sabi. It looks like a million black feet in the north. Tonto, what are we going to do if they attack us? What will we do? Tonto started to mount his horse. And as he mounted his horse, he said to the Lone Ranger, What do you mean, we, white man? Sometimes, it's easy to feel like the whole world is against you. It's not true, but it does feel that way. You become paranoid and you think everyone is against poor old me. These feelings usually come along when you experience loss in your life. Loss of a job, a marriage, the death of a loved one, loss of health, and other losses as well. Other times they come when Mean people attack you, and there are a lot of mean people in this world. You know that. In times like these, where do you find joy when the joy is gone? Seriously, take a look around. There is sadness everywhere, bad news, long faces, heavy hearts everywhere, even among the followers of Jesus. It shouldn't be this way. But it is. In the Bible, there's a story about the people of Israel who were sad and depressed. No doubt they felt the world was against them. Yes, even God. Actually, there were more, they were more than sad. They were wallowing in their sadness. According to the Bible story, they wept the whole day, remembering all that they once had but it was now gone. They were once a mighty nation, and they had all that they could desire. They had everything at their fingertips. They had a beautiful place to worship, but the Babylonians attacked them 
in a war and demolished their beautiful city and their place of worship and drug them off to Babylon as slaves. They lost everything in their country. Everything. Their home, their family, their faith. And in the midst of all of this, they lost all of their joy. Where's God? And how could they have the sweetness of this joy back in their lives once again? As you look at the Bible closely, the answer is kind of unexpected and shocking, but very effective. Nehemiah tells his people to go out and have a party, eat and drink sweet wine, and make that particular day holy. Now, I know uh, this is difficult for some of you teetotaler Methodists, but this is Nehemiah's formulation. It is the Bible's formulation. Not only is this Nehemiah's formula, but you can find the same formula in other parts of the Bible. For example, in Ecclesiastes chapter uh, 9, verse 7, we are told, Go eat your food with gladness and drink your wine with a joyful heart. If you want joy and success, stop grieving, stop moping around, and be happy. Have fun, have a party, and always remember, as the Bible says in Nehemiah 8.10, the joy of the Lord is your strength. If you want to have joy in your life, you must make it your own. Don't sit around and whine and complain, but claim it for yourself and your loved ones, remembering that real joy comes from God. It's not something you fabricate with a busy life. Not even money or success can obtain real joy. Rather, the joy of the Lord is your strength, even in the midst of tears, loss, and sadness. What Nehemiah is telling his people is not to sit around like a toad on a stump, but to get out there and enjoy the blessings of God in your life by looking ahead rather than looking back at the bad things that have happened. Friends, your attitude toward life and relationships go a long way. So don't wallow in your sadness, but look to God and God will give you everything you need to overcome the obstacles in life. Let your joy be found in God's love for you. But you may ask, well, how is this done? And the Bible's answer is simple and straightforward to the point. Turn to God with an open, repentant, and prayerful heart. You see, when a person gives their life to God, their joy is no longer dependent upon external conditions in life, but on God. Whether it's sickness, health, poverty, wealth, failure, or success, your joy and strength is found in God. God and God alone, yes, one can find some joy in the pleasures of life, but they're always, you know what I mean, they're, they're short-lived. I heard a story sometime back about Rose Kennedy. At age 93, a reporter interviewed Rose Kennedy. By this time of her life, she had former children die a violent death. Another, Rose Mary, was severely handicapped all of her life and would soon be gone. 
The reporter asks about all of this, and Rose Kennedy answered slowly, I have always believed that God never gives us a cross to bear larger than we can carry. And I have always believed that no matter what, God wants us to be happy. God doesn't want us to be sad. Birds sing after the storm, she said. Why shouldn't we? For Rose Kennedy, joy was something one had to pursue if one wanted to enjoy its blessings. You don't wait for it, and you don't mope around wondering why you don't have it. You go out and you get it. This means that you must seek God with your whole heart. There's a wonderful story about two men in the hospital. One man sat near the window, and the other laid flat on his back where he couldn't see anything. They spoke of their wives, home, family, and friends. The man who sat next to the window would often talk about what he could see out the window. And he always seemed so happy. There was a fine parade that passed by one day. Oh, and he could see the flowers and, and the ducks swimming in the pond. What a wonderful, beautiful sight to see. The other man who laid flat on his back thought to himself, Boy, I sure wish I could sit by the window and, and look out. It sure would make me feel happier if I could see what the other man could see. The next morning, the man who slept near the window was moved from the room. He died. The man who laid flat on his back felt guilty as they moved him next to the window. Slowly, painfully, he propped himself up on one elbow to take a look out the window. What would he see? Perhaps there would be deer standing by the pond. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Yes, finally. He would have the joy of seeing it all for himself. He strained to look out the window beside the bed and to his dismay, all he could see was a blank wall of another building. Friends, when the joy is gone, you need to focus on God and see the joy all around you. A joy many in this world cannot see. Don't focus on temporary things. Not at all. A new car, new house, or new job is, is only temporary. That kind of joy will never last. Instead, you need to give your life to God. And when you do, God will fill you with an eternal joy. So how is it with you? Sometimes you get so wrapped up in the business of life that you forget about the joy of the Lord. You treat your marriage and your relationships like a business by appointment only. You fail to share your inner self with each other. Worst tragedy strikes your home and your joy dissipates. Listen to me closely. Life is short and it's time to have a party. This can only happen when you give yourself to God and realize that God is the source of your joy. And this is how your relationship works with God. It's no different. One cannot have a joyful relationship with God when you are not willing to have a relationship with God every day of your life. Friends, 
The happiest people are rarely the richest or the most beautiful or even the most talented. They are those who look to God for their needs and for their hope and dreams. They are the people who have learned how to savor every moment of life. They are those who don't seek their own will and their own way. But they are they, those who seek God's way. What do you say? I think it's time to have a party. Say it with me. It's time to have a party. Come on now. Say it with me again. It's time to have a party. Louder. It's time to have a party. And remember this, there is nothing you can do to make God love you more. And there's nothing you can do to make God love you less. God loves you just the way you are. God bless you and may God's spirit be with you this week. Amen.